I'm here by the Fernste Uni, which is what we call it here, but it's got lots and lots of names. In this video, I'm going to go into a lot of stuff. I'm going to go into why I call this a rocket stove, all the similarities. I'm going to show you how it's built inside, how it works, what the principles are. I'm going to talk about some history of it, all that kind of stuff. But what I want to do is start this test. Now, during this video, I'm going to do at least two burns of this and monitor it temperature-wise, hour by hour. And I want to get that started. And then while it's going, I'll be able to go into all the other stuff. A bit of birch bark. Now I loaded this the way I always load it. It's packed quite tight, but not too tight. There's some air in between. It's packed vertically. Some people do it the other way. Now the reason I don't want to do these tests is because I have the way that I burn it. But in doing the research for these videos, because I want to make sure that when I'm telling people things that I'm telling them the right stuff. What I found is that because these are very popular in Finland, there's a lot of online forums with Finnish people talking about how to light these. And what you find is the second comment in every one of those threads is, no, no, there's only one way to burn one of these correctly. Um, but what becomes clear very, very quickly as you go through all the forums and all the posts is that everyone has this one correct way and they're all completely different. So I know that in the comments I'm going to get someone saying, no, no, there's only one way to, to, to burn this. There are lots of ways to burn, to burn this. Lots of ways to burn this. I'm, I'm going to do a test so we've actually got some facts and figures. So let me get this started and then we'll get into all the details. I have to open the baffles. So this burn is the burn that you can see on the left. And what I'm doing with this one is I'm keeping the doors wide open and the baffles wide open. So there's nothing restricting the air to go into this. This is what you would, people will call an efficient burn. Um, but let's see what the figure, figures say. I have put tape in three positions on the stove. And that's because I have noticed that there are three very, very different areas of heat. The top and the middle and the bottom all heat up at different rates. And then when it's all closed down, that gradually evens out. So I want to actually document that in terms of figures. So we're going to do that. And those are there so that I can aim the laser thermometer at exactly the same places on each time. So we'll see how this one does. And here's the first similarity with the rocket stove. The rocket stove people will tell you that one of the defining characteristics of a rocket stove is the sound that it makes. Well, the sound you're hearing now is coming from that little microphone that I clipped to the box of wood next to the stove. Unedited sound straight from the stove. Now this term efficient burn, I've got some problems with that, but just for the sake of argument, while this, is, this one is going now, I'm gonna go outside and film the chimney so you can see what kind of emissions, what kind of smoke and stuff is coming out of the chimney at the moment. So the only thing I did to this burn was towards the end of the burn I opened up the grill and pulled some of the coals from the back of the oven to the front because if, if you don't do that then they smolder there at the back and they take a long long time to burn through so that's the only thing i did with this burn now what's happening on the right here is what we're going to be testing against and i suppose if the first test is the efficient burn we'll have to call this one the inefficient burn i am going to to restrict the airflow and the baffles 
to slow the burn down as much as possible and we'll see how that affects the temperatures. Now, as you see in the middle of the screen, I just took a temp temperature reading at in the actual fire nest. At that point, it was 498 degrees. Okay, so that video on the left, that seems to have stopped at one hour. There's a reason for that, and that is that I'm gonna get the second test up to the one hour point as well get them synchronized and then we can compare them as they go up hour by hour. Now the history of this thing goes back to the late 1800s where they were built in Russia but they became popular in Finland and in Sweden in the 1940s or so, or so thereabouts. Very popular in Finland. Um, I used to live in a house that had four rooms and there was one of these in every room. Now the ones in Sweden tended to be, this is a generalization, but they tended to be covered with tile. Whereas in Finland they tended to be covered in metal. Obviously there are some tiled ones in Finland, there are some metal ones in Sweden, but that was the general trend. And the reason that the metal is so good is that it seals everything in, all the brickwork. So even if there's a crack between bricks, that develops over time, the smoke is not going to come out. It's all sealed in, in inside the metal skin. And also, if you're heating it up really hot um, and then it cools down, then you heat it up again, those tiles tended to crack and fall off. Whereas, obviously, you don't have that problem with the metal skins. It's built in sections, obviously. The bottom section is put in, then the brickwork is done inside the section, then the next section of metal is put in, the brickwork is done inside that. And it just grows and some of them are really tall I've seen them well over three meters tall uh, obviously in a house that had very high ceiling it's actually an old school house but um, <coughs> what's really interesting is what's inside these things now we've I've said that it's kind of like a rocket stove so well, what's inside there is a burn chamber a riser a bell and thermal mass let me show you. Okay, so these two are now synchronized and they're now moving on to two hours after they are lit. Now, when I said that in the second example, I closed the whole thing down, it's important to note that all stoves are different and you need to get to know your own stove. I know I can completely close the doors on this and enough air gets in just between the cracks around the door. They let enough air in for the fire to burn quite nicely. I can show you the fire burning now. There was one of these in this house when I moved here, but it was in really bad condition, didn't work very well, so I got rid of it. And I built a little barrel stove there that was there for a year or more until I got around to getting a new one of these put in. I didn't actually build this one, the actual brickwork. I got a professional in to do it, and I was his assistant cutting bricks, mixing mortar and all that kind of stuff. So I saw how it all went together. And to explain what's inside here, maybe the best way is to show you some pictures of one of these at various stages during the build process. The first one um, is useful because it shows something that I should have already mentioned, which is that the flue outlet, the outlet to the chimney on most of these, not all, but most of these, is right down at floor level. And that's true of most types of fireplaces here in Finland. And it makes sense. The longer the chimney, the better draw you're going to get. So start the chimney at floor level. Now the next picture shows the, the fire nest. Now for the rocket stove people, the burn chamber. It's a little bit different in that most rocket stoves, the J-tube style, style rocket stoves, You've got the burn chamber way in front of the, the riser, uh, even a batch box, it's offset to the front or the side in some. But 
with these things it's directly underneath the riser and that's where you, what you see in the third picture it probably looks quite familiar to some rocket stove builders we're building a riser in the middle of the stove with air channels all the way around now in most rocket stove that riser rises up in the middle of an empty barrel and then you have a flue leading from the manifold at the bottom through your thermal mass in this case the riser rises up inside a barrel if you like but the barrel is lined with the thermal mass basically exactly a three hour point coals have gone out closing the baffles So this is closed down, baffles are closed, but the interesting thing is what the temperatures do now. So I will continue monitoring this and show you what happens. Um, the other test should still be going. Um, I'm expecting it to be for quite some time. So um, back to you soon. So now we go on to hour four and here is a cross-sectional view of what is inside this thing. As you can see, the heat rises up the middle, hits the top, goes out to the sides, and then goes all the way back down to floor level where it can go into the chimney at the back. Now at this point, with test two, I'm gonna take the coals out. And the reason for that is that when the masonry oven is at its hottest, I will take the coals out rather than let them sit in there and smolder and allow the temperature to drop. I want to get the baffles closed while everything's at its hottest. Now every stove is different and I know mine pretty well. I know that when I can't touch the lower portion of it, that's the point that I need to take the coals out. That's as hot as it's going to get. As it happens, and now that I'm doing these tests, it turns out that's pretty much exactly 100 degrees. Interesting. Learning all the time. Now the diagram that you're looking at um, is how the new ones are made. And I say new ones because these things are becoming popular again after going out of fashion many decades ago. They're now coming back and people are building new ones. Companies have started remaking, producing the shell, the metal shells, and lots of companies are now selling packages for installing new fancy versions of the, the old Punta Uni with glass doors and all kinds of things. But let's go back to the cross-sectional views. And here we've got the one on the left, which is the way they're done now. The right-hand drawing is taken from a drawing from the 1940s. And you can see the difference. I think it would be really interesting to be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison of, and see how they performed. Okay, well, as you can see from the tests, the efficient burn is pretty much petered out and is heading back towards baseline um, whereas the inefficient burn is still going strong and still putting out heat into the room now i know that i'm already geeking out on these old masonry heaters but allow me just one more because this one is just fantastic in its complexity it includes the sand battery up at the top and you might notice there is a secondary intake that draws air in through the ashtray. But this is a, a beautiful thing. This is taken from an even older drawing. That uh, I, This is my interpretation of that drawing. And it works in the same way and in the same metal sheath. It's still a punta uni, but the riser only goes a little more than half of the way up. The heat then comes back down to the ground level and then round to two channels at the back of the stove. Now I've got a picture from the top so you can see the two channels that are at the back of the stove. And when the damper down at the bottom left is closed, this damper here, then all of the, the gases go around to the right side from ground level all the way to the top of the stove. And they then skirt around the sand battery heating that sand battery and then back down the left channel before going up the chimney at almost floor level. Now I think that's just genius and it would be such a nice project to be able to build one of these. Try and recreate this and then 
do a side-by-side -side test with one of these new simple ones. So what have I got lined up for the next video? Well, you may notice what I'm sitting against. Well, if anyone's interested, I would like to do a video on this thing. It's an amazing masonry heater. It's got a big firebox. It's got a secondary burn chamber, a summer and a winter baffle. All its channels come down to the floor level and run along. This is a, a warmth wall, I guess would be the translation. But this thing, this masonry heater heats this entire wall and includes these air channels which run parallel to the chimneys to heat the, in, the air inside the, the room. So if you're interested, then I'd love to do a review on this thing. I'd also like to do a video on why this measurement is not nearly as important as this measurement. But for now, thanks for letting me geek out with you for a little while. I've got loads of content coming. <clears throat> if you want to know when it's coming, then you know what to do. Just subscribe, you get a notification. Thanks and out.